When you have hair loss, it can be such a scary and deceivingly lonely place. But you know what? You're not alone. You are here with me. Welcome to the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. Hi, I'm Deborah Heim. I am a certified alternative hair specialist, a wig boutique owner, and wig wearer myself due to alopecia. And this is my tell it like it is take on all things alternative hair. I also happen to be a certified confidence coach, so I'm going to be sprinkling in some mindset hacks for good measure. So take a deep breath, sit back and relax, and listen to my favorite ways and my best advice on how I help others and help myself to rock that alternative hair. We're going to drop that shame and stigma. What is that about anyway? Now, let's do this. This is Deborah Heim, and you're listening to The Alternative Hair Alchemist. Now, this week I thought I would talk about some of the things you can do when your wig starts to wear out. Now, I will admit that along the way, I have become what I call a wig snob. And by snob, I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just saying that just like a wine snob, once you start to get into something and you learn the really good kinds that separates them from the bad kinds, you can become kind of picky with the level of quality that you'll accept. So being a wig snob, along the way, I have gotten into the nicer and nicer wigs. I talk all the time about hand tied. And of course, your nicer wigs are always going to be more expensive. Well, you know what I mean, you can get a deal, but just like on the average, a more high quality wig is going to be a little bit more than something you might get on Amazon. I think we can agree on that. So that can make it a little more disappointing when they start to wear out. And I remember I used to get really, really mad about this, but I learned how to do what I call a reframe. And that is take a look at the situation and ask yourself, can I see this differently? Now, when I think about how fast the wigs wear out, I started to pay attention And I had to admit to myself that I think they wear out sooner than they actually do. Because when you're going along wearing something from day to day and you don't really notice the wear, but then a couple months into it, when you start to notice the wear, at least with me, I'll be like, wow, this really just started to tear up so fast. But then I'll go through my pictures and I'll have taken a picture of it like several months ago. So sometimes I think the time we attribute to something tearing up is sometimes a little bit off because, you know, that's just the way it goes. When you really like something, it kind of breaks your heart to see it go. But another thing that you need to keep in mind is when the wig starts to show wear and tear, you know what? It doesn't look any different from somebody with split ends. Now, I know how sensitive I am about thinking my wig is worn out, especially when I work with brand new ones every day. I can be pretty picky. But, you know, I will have clients come through the door, you know, 12 months later in the same wig, and it doesn't, it looks fine to me. So, again, one of the reframes you might want to take a look at is, is it your perception? I think we're all harder on ourselves than we are on anybody else. So, part of it... There's two things to consider there. Is it really that new and tearing up? Because it probably is longer than you think it has been. And also, if you were looking at this on anybody else, you wouldn't be, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell. And a lot of the times, how the wig looks is way, way better than how it feels on your head. Because whether it's human hair, whether it's synthetic, they get dry and itchy. That's the first thing you notice is like at the back of your neck when that starts. But here's another thing you can do. Do what you can. 
I like to put it on and go, but over this year, I'll tell you, I have made the effort into doing what I can. Now, if it's a heat-friendly synthetic, I heat the curling up to whatever temperature is good for that, use a little water, and flat iron it out, and I will tell you, it does major improvement. So when I actually take the time to flat iron the ends, and some of the fibers, some of the makers like Ellen Villa, they, and and I'm not exactly sure if John Renault tells to do this too, but with Ellen Villa, the fibers actually need heat to keep them smooth. So it's not like you're doing anything extra. It's just maintenance of the wig. And of course, if you have a non-heat friendly synthetic, there's always steam, which I'll tell you, if you can learn how to use steam with a regular synthetic, it can be your best friend. I have seen videos where people do absolutely amazing things, changing the style. And I think we all just take it as a given is, oh, it's synthetic. It can't be styled. Well, yes, it can if you're motivated enough. The next thing you can do, what you can with, is try a variety of clips. Now, your clip, depending on the size, I have figured out updos with a clip covering like the dry part of the wig, and it looks like you've just got a really classy updo with a nice decorative clip on it, and people think you did that intentionally. Like some of my best accidental hairdos have been trying to cope with something every now and then I'll cut too much off of a piece of wig or something and when you get your barrette you get your clips going believe me you can make it look like you just thought of the coolest style in the world it's happened to me and the added plus is when you go into a shop that has hair ornaments and hair accessories it's fun to go and look get yourself an assortment of whatever barrettes, clips, what have you, because it's really only by trying in front of the mirror when you're not under pressure that you can come up with some really cute styles. Another thing to not be afraid of doing is don't be so afraid to give it a haircut. I religiously, as I go along, will point cut my ends to keep it looking fresh because I'm very stickler about how it looks. So I know early on I would be terrified to take scissors to a wig. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't grow back. But, you know, another thing I know is we are so worried that if we cut something uneven, somebody will know. But I'll tell you, as I've become progressively braver and braver in giving giving some pretty big haircuts, you know, I've had some things come out really, really cute. And the bottom line is... Nobody knows that you did it. I mean, they just assume when someone sees you, they assume that that is how the wig is supposed to look. And again, keep in mind with bio hair, there are so many hairstyle changes and so many color changes. I think we as an alternative hair wearer tend to be a little more worried about what people perceive. I think it just is the nature that goes along with it. But hey, take that for what it's worth. And I've talked about this before, but what I usually do is I always keep two of the same wig going at the same time so that one is ready at all times. And usually I've had one longer than the other. Like I'll get the replacement of that style quite a bit of time before it will wear out. And then I designate the older one as my house wig quote-unquote house wig and that will be the one that I use for the workhorse of most situations and keep one really nice and as brand spanking new as I can for going out for work situations what have you but again don't let getting a new wig slow you down again my message to all of us is you deserve it It is something that is part of you, so don't think twice about that. Another thing coming up, we're going into holiday seasons. It's perfect for you to suggest to somebody to get you a gift certificate, get you a Visa gift card or what have you, because women will not 
do for themselves. So if you tell someone that's planning on getting you a gift anyway, that the gift of hair is so awesome, then it'll work out well for both of you. Because I know when I give gifts, I really like it when I know the person is going to enjoy it. And when we all have gift givers that just, you know, get you what they secretly want. And well, you know, again, if that happens, don't be afraid to sit speak up. But again, that's an entirely different podcast subject. It's like becoming more assertive, setting my boundaries, sticking up for myself. That is something my confidence also grew as my love and getting better at alternative hair grew. Because It's a well-known fact that when you have a good hair day, you feel like you can conquer the world. And that is the feeling that alternative hair can give you. And the last thing I'm going to say, but it's more of a don't with your worn out alternative hair is please don't be selling it as new on any of the used sites or groups or what have you. Please be honest about the amount of time that you've worn something. And if it's not something you wouldn't be excited to buy at that price, then don't offer it at that price. I'm sorry, but this needs to be said because I monitor through some of those groups. And I'll tell you, there are things being listed as new I'm not mentioning any names or any group, when you know that it's been worn for whatever number of days. And sometimes I think that might be on the part of the person that buys the wig, doesn't know what a new one is supposed to look like. But also I've seen people use the pictures that they bought the wig from to sell it again. So you know, again, buying used is another podcast episode. I've already done one on that, but maybe there'll be another one coming up. So hopefully this week's episode has given you some information you can use. If there's anything that I can do for you, book an appointment online. You can find me at D-E-B-R-A-E-H-E-I-M dot com and at the shop very best little hair house and the and the wise wig advice and support group on facebook and was one last thing if you have a minute if you go to apple or spotify where the reviews are and leave me a review if this has helped you i would be most grateful because that's how other people find the show and until next week peace love and alternative hair If you enjoyed this episode, you might like working with me one-on-one even better. You can check out the options at DebraHeim.com. You can find my shop at VeryBestLittleHairHouse.com. And don't forget my Wise Wig Advice and Support Group, also on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, peace, love, and alternative hair.